Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining me at this virtual event. I hope you're all having a great time and a great learning experience here at DynamicsCon. My name is Michael. I'm with MSRMAirlines.com, and over the course of the next 40 minutes, I have the honor and I'm very excited to talk to you about professional document generation, processing, as well as automation of business documents in the Power Platform, as well as Dynamics 365. So let's get started and take a look into the agenda so you know what you expected to see. First of all, we will talk about the why. Why is there a need for a document solution on the Power Platform? I will talk about the use cases and business requirements we see our customers and partners using our tools for. What do we offer? So what do we as MSRM add-ons to come bring to the table when it comes to handling those business scenarios? The solution I'm going to talk about is called Documents Core Pack. It has been the go-to solution for documents for Dynamics 365 over the last 15 years, and we have thousands of customers using it as of today. This year, we did release the new connector for the Power Platform, bringing all our capabilities to Power Automate, as well as Canvas apps, allowing you to equip your business application with our rich and enhanced document features. Last and certainly not least, um, and this will be the main part of this showcase, is the how. Um, I will do a lot of live demonstrations, starting from the very beginning, the template design, showing how to generate and process documents in a different set of business applications, as well as showing a lot of use cases inside Power Automate. With that being said, let's talk briefly about the documents and the need for documents in business apps. First of all, let's take a look into a common sales cycle. So um, typically there's a lot of documents involved there, starting with a new lead that you might need to send some personalized information to. As you work the opportunity, you might need to send some contracts. You need to create a statement of work. Maybe some contracts like an NDA need to be sent. Once you're getting closer to winning the deal, typically at one point you need to send off a quote to the customer. Maybe you need to create a purchase order. And of course, once you win the deal, you need some kind of an invoice, uh, typically in PDF format, create an order, etc. So as you can see, a ton of documents just in this very common uh, process that, most, uh, that is applicable to most businesses. On top of that, we've got Power Apps. With Microsoft providing you with this great tool to really build the application that you need for your business. Therefore, we do have a lot of customers using our tool uh, within their industry. Like in the insurance industry, uh, we sometimes create insurance documents, insurance certificates. In the banking industry, it is used to create financial statements. Sports industry, doing tickets or labels for visitors. Or another good example is every company that somehow offers subscriptions. You might need to send a payment reminder 14 days prior to the due date. Once the date is there and the payment is done, you need to send a payment confirmation and an invoice completely automated. Or if the payment bails out and is not paid, you might need to send overdue notices. This is just to give you some ideas of what our tool is capable of. Of course, it is also used within Dynamics 365 for customer service, be it field service, be it customer service, to do contracting, creating work orders, maybe reports, reporting on failures or the uh, uptime for certain services that we offer or that you offer. Even within Dynamics for Marketing, we do have customers using it to equip their customer journeys with document capabilities. As for example, at one point throughout the journey, you might need to send a contract or you might need to send a, a quote to a customer. But more often it is used to create rich and personalized email attachments. So as you can see, a lot of different use cases across a lot of different industries um, that our tool is used for. So we are quite confident and hope that we can also handle whatever document need you're facing within your business. So let's get to the solution. The solution that we offer is called Documents Core Pack, and we consider it a unified document solution. How does it work? Well, at the very bottom, we've got the Common Data Service. The Common Data Service, or CDS, is the gatekeeper for all your business data. So this is where uh, kind of the database where Microsoft stores all the business data, be it your accounts, be it your contracts, quotes, whatever data you have inside your system, you will be able to bring it into the common data service to be used by a set of this apps that Microsoft is providing on top of it. The most prominent one I'd say is still Dynamics 365 for customer engagement, a perfect example for a so-called model-driven power app. Uh, in addition, you can just have a Canvas app that is built for a certain process within your organization. And then we've got Power Automate, the really powerful automation tool by Microsoft, allowing to completely run processes behind the scenes. Now, Documents Core Pack actually sits on top of all of those uh, and consists of three main elements. 
First one is the design. We try to keep the design of templates and reports as easy as possible, and therefore we implemented our template designer inside Microsoft Word. So you can use all the rich Microsoft Word capabilities to create nice looking documents. Basically what we do is we equip Microsoft Word with a tool that allows you to map data out of the common data service into your documents to be visualized. After designing the templates, we do have a set of tools that allow you to generate the documents as well as process them in an efficient manner. You know, every document has a purpose. Most often you need to send it by email to a customer. Maybe you just need a printed copy. Uh, maybe you need to start an e-signing process. We support all of those within our tool. Last but also not least is the automation, which I think is the most powerful element uh, of all of those. What it allows you to do is to really standardize and streamline common processes to be done via Power Automate in the background. This severely allows you to reduce the user workload. Um, before we jump into the live demo, I will actually touch briefly on those three elements once more. Just a few words around template design. As stated before, our mantra is really utilizing the power of Microsoft Word. Nearly every user uh, is familiar with Word and will be able to create the templates they need. We are not limiting any design features or any capabilities within Word, so you're free to use whatever you need. What we do is we provide this mapping tool you can see uh, in the ribbon that allows you to incorporate fields from Dynamics 365 or the Common Data Service into the document. We don't have any limitations with respect to relationships, so you can really get all the data you will need. In addition, we support filtering, grouping, aggregation, a lot of special features. Next to simply mapping data to show up in a document, we also have a ton of special features, like you can embed dynamic pictures or dynamic documents, like uh, product pictures or maybe spec sheets that you need. You can predefine e-signature tags if you're creating templates for a contract. You can predefine where maybe the initials need to go or the signature portion where the customers need to sign off later on. So bottom line, really easy and simple to do within Microsoft Word, as you will see in the demo afterwards. Next, the processing capabilities. As stated before, and again, every document that gets generated has some kind of purpose. Um, so it needs to, something needs to happen with the document, right? Most often, and I think still the number one use case is emailing. So we allow to, of course, generate email attachments as well as email content. What's becoming more popular is uh, e-signing. We do integrate with two well-known providers, Adobe Sign and DocuSign, to streamline and simplify your e-signing processes via Documents Callback. Printing is another big thing, as we allow to call printers from your local network or even your workstation, your personal workstation, from the cloud, from within Power Automate or your Power App. So a lot of options there, all designed to allow you to equip your application with advanced document capabilities. To give an example, you can build a quoting app that allows you to really easily uh, create an application for your sales guys to generate quotes in an efficient and fast manner. You could have a field service app for your field service guys that are delivering goods to your customers that is equipped with e-signing capabilities and have them or enable them to do in-person signing directly with the customer as they are on site. Uh, and again, we allow or support both now. You can equip both auto-driven apps and canvas apps uh, with our capabilities. One thing I'd like to add on processing documents is the concept of one-click actions. We do know that in most businesses, uh, processes that include documents are recurring. As for example, if your company is sending invoices as PDF to customers, as well as you need a, a printed hard copy, as well as it needs to go to SharePoint, um, this will be the same for every customer that you might have. With one-click actions, we allow you to predefine those processes for your end users. And ideally, you will end up with a single action, a single click uh, that your users can uh, initialize and perform all the tasks defined behind the scenes. So it really allows you to keep the workload for your users at the bare minimum. Going one step further, um, we come to automation. Um, basically allowing to automate your business documents via Power Automate. How does it work? Well, typically some event occurs within your environment. This can be things like a new file gets uploaded to SharePoint. This can be just a new Twitter. Uh, so there's a ton of triggers that Power Automate allows to catch. But when it comes to business documents, typically the triggers that we need are within the common data service. As for example, a new contact gets created or maybe a new quote gets activated. 
So for the new contact, you might need to send a welcome letter. For the quota becomes active, you need to send it off to your customers. Or Flow is also enabled to be called on demand by the users as they go along. Um, independent on the trigger, the second thing is that within the flow, once, once it runs, Documents Core Pack provides a, provides a oh. um, Within the flow, once it runs, Documents Core Pack provides a set of actions, I think it's more than 20, to generate and process documents as needed. So you can call Documents Core Pack within your flow, you can set it up as used by any connector within Power Automate and do whatever you need to do with your documents. With that being said, I think it's time to jump over to the live demo. Okay, uh, the first part of the demo will be around template design. Our goal is to create a template that we can use to send out quote information to our customers, like a quote document. Um, I already predefined some static content. So I'm in Microsoft Word and I have a headline where we want a quote number to appear. We want the customer name and customer details to appear down here. We want a list of all the quote details, all the elements that the quote includes down here and have some bank details. As you can see, we are really not limited from a design perspective. We can use all the design features for Microsoft Word, be it fonts, be it uh, styles that you have to find, be it embedding of pictures or tables. The important part is that once I'm ready to map fields from Dynamics, we can go ahead and do so via the MSRM addons.com ribbon at, at the top. This is our template design uh, designer that provides you with a set of features to um, map fields out of your environment into this document. The way to go is to hit insert mail merge fields. So I'm clicking that and what happens is that a taskbar appears on the right side that provides me with all the fields uh, from Dynamics or from my CDS environment. The first thing I need to do is to choose what entity do I want to create this template for? We are going with a quote, but as you can see, we really allow to use any entity that you might have, including entities that you have created on your own, so-called custom entities. Um, so I'm choosing the quote, and once selected, I'm provided with, provided with all the fields of the quote entity. Um, so up here, we want the quote number to appear. So I can go down this list and look for the um, quote ID. There we have it. And I can hit insert field. This will place uh, a placeholder that looks somewhat like that, some brackets and the name of the field that is mapped. So the quote number goes here. Down here we want the name of the customer to appear. Now the customer is not directly defined on the quote itself but is a record related to the quote. So when I scroll down this list I will actually notice that next to all the fields of the quote entity itself I have a lot of expandable items representing lookups or related records. So in our case, we are looking for the potential customer account. I expand this item and am now able to select all the fields of the account record, our account entity in my system. What we are looking for is the account name. So I look up the field and I can hit insert field to again add the placeholder. Directly underneath, we want uh, some address details to appear. So I will go with um, the street one, very common. And this should be followed by the postal code. And right next to the postal code, I want the, the city to appear. So uh, bottom line, it's very straightforward to just map fields out of my environment into the document. When it becomes a little trickier is uh, using so-called one-to-many or many-to-many relationships. As for example, a quote typically has a one or at least one or most often more than one uh, line items, so elements of the quote. Like I can have a quote where we uh, sell two bikes of that label and another bike and some helmets, things like that. And typically this data should appear as a list. So when I go to the uh, or in order to map data from one to many or many to many relationship, we need to switch to the additional tab in the designer. This allows me to resolve any relationship, relationship that I have in my system, including any custom relationship that you might have built. Um, we do know though that for quote, quote products is very common and very often used by our customers. So we predefine that relationship to be automatically resolved. So I click on that. And what I get 
is a list of all the fields of my quote details. Um, and again, I can even go further down and from the quote detail, get information of the product related to that quote detail. And this is actually what I will start with. So I expand that item and I'm choosing the product name. When I now hit insert field, our tool will actually know that, hey, you have potentially more than one record in return. How do you want this data to appear? In 99% of cases, um, this should be in a table format. So we kind of pre-select uh, insert a new table. I can define whether I want a header above the table, a footer below, I'll go with both. I want to split the header automatically and I want three columns. Um, and then I just hit OK and our solution will go ahead and pre-create the table for us, knowing that this is uh, kind of a loop looping through all the quote details of the quote that is, uh, this template is executed against. And I can now go ahead and just add a name. I want the quantity to go in here. Just finish my table and I want the amount in the last column. I will do a little modification here, something like that. And uh, I can, of course, add additional fields like the quantity should go in here. I'm going up and choose the quantity. And I'm choosing the amount in the final column. I can do even more advanced stuff like I could do a total and build a sum. Therefore, I'm choosing the, I want to sum over this amount and I pick grouping, mark a sum field, and then I'm placing the same field in my footer row. And to make it look nice, I will put this to the right, likewise to this column. Okay, looks quite okay. And but me, um, as stated before, we are not limited from a design perspective. So I can, of course, go ahead, hit the table design uh, button at the top and choose any predefined uh, layout that exists. So let's go with, this one looks kind of nice. I'll go with that. Okay, this looks cool. Um, we've got our template, let's give it a try. So what I'm doing now is saving the template so it's available for users later on. So I'm hitting save template in our dialog. And I can now choose to save this somewhere. I will call it the this, this is my dynamics con template. Give it a name and hit save. Uh, by doing so, we are actually allowing other users to utilize this template to create documents afterwards, but I will get to that in a second. Now, as a template designer, I'm of course interested in how does this look like. So to run tests, I can use the choose CRM data option up here. Uh, Look for a quote, a test quote that I have. So I'm going with Documents Core Pack and Attachment Extractor from my system and hit select. And we will actually see how this document looks like um, once generated. There we go. So we've got our quote number up here. We've got the company. We've got the address details. We've got all our quote products. There's a Documents Core Pack quote with a template designer and attachment extractor totaling to 14,340 euros. Maybe let's do some final design improvements in here um, like this is a different font this should be in euro format this should be integer numbers um, just to give you an idea we have a lot of, of ways to kind of handle this so for this one it's actually fairly simple i just add the, uh, edit the font for this one i can hit on the msrm add-ons tab into uh, field properties and just type in the format I want. So I know this is a format string. I can also pre-select an existing culture. So I'm choosing an integer number and hit OK. And for the base amount, we do the same thing. Field properties, and I'm just typing in my format string. In this case, I want a, a money format. So I'm choosing that and hit OK. I'll save the template once more, run another test. And ideally, we now have a nice looking document that is that is good to go. Let's take a look. There we go. Um, we've got now integer numbers for the quantity. We've got the nice format for our value down here. So this template is good to go. So I can go ahead, save it. Oh, sorry. This looks good. And we can now go ahead and save the template to be available for our end users to be used within Dynamics 365, within Power Automate, or within a Canvas app.
So I'm just hitting save template and we are good to go. Okay, now that we have our template defined, let's take a look into the user perspective and how to use this template to generate nice looking documents and perform certain tasks with it, like sending it off to a customer. What I will start with in this demo is uh, within a model-driven application. In this case, I'm using Dynamics 365 for custom engagement. And within model-driven applications, the way to go for users to use our tool is by making use of the create document button in the command bar. So our goal here is we've got this quote inside our system. It's called documents call back and attachment extractor. We've got three quote line items. We want to send this to the potential customer contact, which is myself in this case. Um, so what I will do or what users can do is hit create document up here. This will open the so-called documents callback dialog. Um, I will get back to those blue buttons in a moment, but for now, let's just use the first one. And this brings us to, to the first part of the dialog. The dialog is a free step wizard that guides the user through this process. The first step is choose which template do you want to use during this process. So in this case, I'm picking the Dynamics Com template that we've used before uh, or created before. And I hit next. Second step, define what should happen to the document once it's generated. Um, the first thing is, what should the file type be? So I stick with PDF, although we do support docx, HTML, etc. I'm going with PDF here. Um, how do you want to attach the document? Do you want to do as a note, an email? Do you want to start an e-signing process? A lot of options there. We want email attachment, so we stick with that as well. And now get some email specific um, parameters to fill, like who should be the recipient. Um, we want to use the potential customer contact. So I'm picking that one. You can see potential customer contact. Um, I can also choose, do you want to pre-define or pre-build the email content? Which is quite handy because you can really make this very easy. One nice thing about Documents Callback is since we allow to generate HTML content, we support generating rich looking uh, email content with templates based in Microsoft Word. So um, I've got this Documents Callback template called Quote Email. It's kind of a nice looking email template. I could directly send this off. Don't necessarily want to do that now because I want to show you how it looks like. I could send it to a printer. I can save it to SharePoint. Let's do that. I could run a workflow. Uh, this would be needed, for example, if you want to send a notification to the manager, hey, this quote was sent, etc. But let's stick with that and hit next. What will happen now is that our tool will go ahead, um, use the template that we selected in the first step, pull in all the data of that quote record and provide it for a review. So what we should see is the template we created before filled with the data of the record, quote number, company details, uh, all the uh, details of the, the line items. Um, I could say, okay, this is good to go. I can finish the process. But if needed, I can allow users to interact at that point. So they have full control and document if they want to and can do modifications inside Word or inside Word Online before executing the final steps. In our case, we say, okay, no, this looks good. Let's go ahead and finish this off. The user hits finish and our tool will now perform the tasks defined before. So in our case, we create a new email, we attach the document to the email, we create email content, we place the content and we define the, the two as well as uh, the subject. So this is basically good to go. I can send it off to the customer directly. Rather easy, rather simple to do. Uh, now, we do know that if a company is sending quotes as PDF to customers by email, this will be a recurring activity for the accounting person or whoever is doing quotes, the salesperson that needs to send out quotes. So what we allow to do is uh, predefine certain business processes as one-click actions. So when I hit create document once more, you've actually seen uh, that we do have those blue buttons and those blue buttons represent predefined processes. Like we've one defined who that already sends a quote in PDF format to the customer by email and saves it to SharePoint. And the advantage is users don't have to select the template, they don't have to choose the file type, etc. All pre-configured, I can just click that one button and it will run through the dialog, skip the steps that I don't necessarily need to update each time and I will end up with the review step right away. I can even skip that and really have everything done with just a matter of one click. So I can again do a review if needed. This is a different looking document um, behind this one-click action. Shows some of the additional features like I can do dynamic pictures. 
um, etc. Again, I could do edits if needed. If not, I'm good to hit finish. And likewise to before, it will perform the steps uh, defined, which is a new email to the, to the contact with the email attachment being placed, as well as the email content being filled. So quite cool. Um, as stated, this option is available in each model-driven application or each Power App. That is model-driven or each Dynamics 365 for custom engagement um, application that you might have. Now, let's take this one step further. Um, let's assume, okay, we've got quotes in our system, but instead of having the users to do anything at all, I don't even want them to, to uh, go ahead and click on the Create Document button. Let's talk about the automation perspective. Wouldn't it be nice that this quote just gets generated and sent to this customer with just a matter of uh, quote activation? And the way to go here is via uh, a flow. Let's take a look in here. Uh, I'm switching to flow.microsoft.com, showing all my flows, and I've got one predefined that is called send email upon quote activation. That's the one we're looking for. Let me open that up and show you how you can use our document features within a flow. Add it in here. So basically, uh, I assume everybody is familiar with the concept of flow, a really, really powerful tool. Basically allows you to uh, define processes running in the background with a ton of different triggers, uh, I think 400 connectors or something, allowing to connect to all kinds of, of uh, systems. So in our case, we've got the trigger defined that when there's an update on a quote status. Um, and I'm only doing my actions if the status is equal to one, which means the quote was activated in my system. If that is true, we do certain things. I'm creating an email using the common data service connector. Rather simple, uh, common data service current environment. And I'm actually leaving this rather empty. So I'm doing nothing but just create an email. To use Documents Core Pack, um, you can make use of our Documents Callback connector that is available likewise to any other connector. So I can just hit plus, add an action, type in Documents Core Pack, and you will find a Documents Core Pack connector with a variety of actions providing all the features that we provide to, on one hand, create documents with a create document job, but also do things like, um, let's see, print documents, send documents to a printer. Uh, we also have attached documents as a note, attached to an email. So a lot of options there, very easy to set up. So what we have already defined is we do a PDF creation. And the only thing I need to fill in here is I need to specify a template. So this gives me a list of all the templates that exist in my system. Uh, so I'm choosing that one. I'm referencing the record. So I'm passing the ID of the record the trigger came from, the quote that just became active, and I'm specifying the file type. So I'm creating a PDF document based on that template. Then I'm using the attached to email action where I'm specifying, okay, I want to, the document that was generated up here, I'm passing uh, to this action to be uploaded to the email. I'll give it a file name and referencing again, the email this should be attached to. I'm doing the same thing again, but this time for email content. So the only difference to before is I've got a different template, the quote email MD, reference the quote, but the output format is HTML. And I'm using the attached content to email action again, referencing the output of that create action up here, the file name, the document itself, and the email message. And then finally, I'm sending it off uh, to the customer. We think that Sending emails from a flow using the common data service connectors is a little tricky, let's put it that way. It's not the best way. So we also came up with a send email option for common data service emails. I can directly specify which email should be sent. I can just by passing the GUID define the sender, the regarding objects, as well as the whom this should go to, who is the seed, I can have multiple recipients, etc. We try to make this, this really easy. So we've got this really simple flow in the background that should do what we did before via our dialog. So uh, in theory, the only thing we need to do is activate this quote. Let's do that. So this quote is now becoming active. And the nice thing about flow is you can kind of watch in real time what's going on. So I'm going back out here and should see that this is now running. 
Let's take a look how this is progressing. So it was triggered with the update. Um, it should have entered the yes branch and we can see it's now already uh, going through those steps. It already went ahead, created a new email in the background. It did create a PDF document and is now attaching the document to, to my email. That's already done. So kind of cool to kind of be able to watch what's going on in the background. I did now create the email content. Okay, now that was fast. Everything stepped through. Uh, all the steps have been completed. The flow was successful. So what we should add up with um, is an email to the customer, which is myself. So I'm switching to Outlook and there we go. We've got a new demo email um, that was sent from John to myself. Hey Michael, hope you're well. We've got the email content being predefined and we've got our nice looking quote document that we've seen before attached to the email. Everything completely automated. So kind of cool, everything uh, really automated. Um, now let's talk about a little uh, kind of a, a slightly different use case. Let's assume we've got the same thing, but instead of having the quote directly sent to the customer, we need internal approval. Therefore, I've got an approval flow. Approval are uh, really a cool feature provided within Flow. Um, and the way it works in here is again quite straightforward. Um, so the use case is um, likewise to before, when a quote is updated, we want to send an email to the customer but not without uh, prior approval from uh, an internal manager. So what I added to this flow is um, when a quote is updated, I'm creating a document, but I'm not yet sending it off. I've got an approval, an approval step in here. So everyone must approve. And only if the approval is done, um, I'm attaching the document to an email and sending the email off. The cool thing is, since this flow is active, with the activation before, we should see yeah, three minutes ago, this flow was started and it's now waiting in the approval step. I hope, yeah. So it did, it was triggered, it created an email, it created the attachment, but it's now waiting for the approval before the document is sent off. So when, as John Snow, uh, I'm checking my inbox or my approval, I will see that was three minutes ago. I received a new request to approve a quote, an approval, and again, I can see the the nice looking document can look, does that look okay or not? And if it looks okay, I can go ahead and say, uh, I approve and say, um, this is awesome. So there's a good looking quote and submitting this. By doing so, uh, my flow in the background, let's go back to the flow, did now just uh, switch to true is now entering the condition and in a moment we should see that this one is successful. Okay, now it is successful. Uh, let's take a look. So it was approved. It did now attach the document to the email and send it off to the customer, which means that I as the customer should have another email from Sean Snow. Likewise to before, uh, email content being predefined, the document being attached, but it was done after it was approved internally. So I hope this gives you kind of an idea uh, on the capabilities uh, of our solution and what our solution can do um, can do to really automate your document processes. Maybe just briefly, let's touch on another use case that we see quite often. Um, let's go back to Dynamics 365 in this case and let's take a look into uh, invoices. We've got a couple of invoices out and one thing we see a lot are uh, customers do is once an invoice becomes overdue, once a payment is overdue, we want to send notifications to the customers or do things like that. And Flow is the perfect tool to do that. So um, in this case, what fits nicely is a so-called scheduled flow. Um, so I've got a flow in here that is called send overdue notice. Let's take a look in here. Um, again, a very simple setup that I'm using. Let's click edit. So this one, uh, or what we want to do is each week we check for any invoice that is not yet paid, but is overdue for payment. So I've got a recurrence, uh, a flow that runs at 6 a.m. every Monday, every week. I'm then using the common data service connectors to 
load all my invoices the, where the due date is older than one week, so I'm older than x weeks, one, and then on each of those I'm doing two things. I'm creating an overdue notice, a PDF file, I'm grabbing company details, and then I'm this time using just the Outlook connector to send off the email. The reason I'm showing this is that you don't necessarily, with our solution, have to use the common data service connector to do stuff with the document. Basically, the real power is that with our action, you will have the document available inside Flow to do whatever you want. This is like, uh, as I said, use Outlook to send the email, use Gmail, uh, send it to a sure blob, send it to a Dropbox. You can use it basically on all the actions available. Um, SharePoint is another good example. So in this case, I'm just creating a notice with our tool. Again, quite simple setup. I've got a template that is called invoice space overdue, referencing the invoice that is retrieved by this query and creating a PDF. And then down here, I'm using the output of my create step to place an attachment. Um, I could wait for Monday 6 a.m., but in this case, let's make it simple and just run a test. That one, go like this. Um, so I'm now triggering it on demand, I'm triggering the recurrence, but it will now go ahead and browse through my environment looking for, um, looking for overdue invoices. I do know, because I know the data, that there's two of them. So we got two as a result. And this is now looping through one of the two records, doing those three actions. Okay, uh, that was fast. It did now run through, it did send off the emails. So in theory, what we should see uh, in my inbox, let's go back there, yep. Uh, I'm defined as the recipient for both for demo purposes, but we can see that invoice 01002 is overdue since the 13th of August. Um, we've got an email sent by the Outlook connector inside of Flow and the overdue notice. Um, yeah, invoice overdue for 2,100 euros attached to the email. And I received the second one. So again, another great example on how you can really uh, use documents callback to do things like that in conjunction with the really, really powerful tool uh, called Power Automate or, or Flows. Um, last but certainly not least, I want to show you a final element, which is Canvas apps. Canvas apps are kind of cool too. You can create those little, little applications. Sometimes they're even bigger, but basically those purpose-built little applications on a canvas. So for example, what I created here, um, what I created here is an embedded quoting app. So let me open that one up. So um, I've got this little quoting app here. The key message is all the features you've seen before, be it from a document generation, but also a processing perspective, you can use within your Canvas app in a rather simple manner. So I've got a little quoting application allowing my salespeople to generate quotes and perform certain actions like send an email to the customer, save the documents to SharePoint, attach as a node to the record inside Dynamics or send it off to a printer if they need a printed copy. Um, the way it works is again rather simple. So I've got, for example, here I've got templates and what I'm doing up here, let me move that down, is again using our Documents Callback Connector get all templates capability to load all the templates defined for the quote entity in the group event. So I've got this, this list of elements and what this gets me is all the templates defined um, for quotes uh, in the event category. So the ones we've defined before and used before. So users can choose any of those. I'm sticking with the quote base. I'm also allowing them to select the file type. And most importantly, there's a generate button. And again, behind this button, Scroll down a little bit. It's fairly simple. I'm calling the create document job. So an action from our connector, you can create and it has three parameters, which is um, the template ID. And here I'm referencing the one from the, the dropdown list above. Um, this is an embedded app. So I'm passing the ID of the quote um, as the entity reference. And I need to specify a file type as a third parameter. This is a mandatory parameter. And here I'm using the value defined in my little uh, radio button list up here. 
And I'm also specifying a condition parameter that I want the SharePoint copy. What the user gets, or what is nice, is actually, when I click here, um, I get the document back to do certain things within my Canvas app. So for example, I can easily just provide access to that file uh, by putting a label that gives me the file name and a button that actually downloads the generated document. And since it's saved on SharePoint, the SharePoint URL is specified on the so-called return value to parameter of my action. I can then use the print action, print file, to send the document, the generated document, to the printer. I can use the attach file as a note action of documents callback to um, store it against the note inside Dynamics. Um, so really, really easy to do, really easy to use. So I just hit play to, to show you how it works. Um, let me go from scratch. I'll choose a template. I'll go with the Dynamics Come template recreated. I hit generate document. Let's now go ahead, generates the document for me. And what we will end up in in a second or so is the um, is the generated document. So document generation succeeded. I can actually take a look. Yep, that's the one we just created before. Quote ID, it's time a different customer for attachment extractor. And I can now go ahead and do certain things with it. Like for example, I could print it, but you would not see that. So I'm just hitting attach as note. I'm doing that. That's already done. So in theory, when I go back to my quotes in my system, um, and I'm opening the attachment extractor, that's the one we've just used in the app. I should see in my quote details section that uh, just as just right now, so that was one minute ago, um, a new node was created with the document attached. As you've seen, it, there's a lot of ways and how you can use documents Corepack within modern web applications or Dynamics 365, within Canvas apps, but also Power Automate to create and process nice looking documents. Okay, so that concludes the live demo. One thing I'd like to add is that if we did catch your attention or if you want to give it a shot, please do so and feel free to start a trial on Microsoft App Source. It takes no time to do so. Typically, our customers are done in 30 minutes and you're good to go. In addition, it's important to note that there are no functional limitations, which means that every feature we do provide, you will be able to trial. They are also fully supported. So if you run into any issues or have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are happy to help you out uh, in getting the best experience out of Documents Corpac. With that being said, I want to thank everybody for joining my session. I hope you did like what you saw. I want to thank DynamicsCon for giving us the chance to present at this conference and uh, wish you a great day. Bye-bye.